Hello, everyone. Thank you for listening to With Brian Austin Green. I am your host, Brian, here with my co-host, Derek. Hello. Russell. And uh, I know this is sort of, uh, you know, I know I know big news has has hit recently and there's there's stuff that everyone uh, everyone is, is talking about. Um, so first of all, thank you, Derek, for for getting uh, getting on Skype with me as, as soon as you did and uh, and recording this and getting it out. I really appreciate it. Um, I just want to. I just want to be able to clear the air on 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 everything that's going on because uh, right now and and rightfully so, you know, um, we we sort of made the decision early on to not comment on uh, on our relationship, Megan and I, and 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 during this time where everybody's at home and 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 tabloids and paparazzi are are sort of they're they're left they're they're scratching for, you know, any sort of story or anything to, to create and sell. Uh, this has become one of those. And so I wanted to sort of put everything in context a little bit. Cause I, I, I put out, uh, the pictures of, uh, of Colson and Megan came out yesterday on her birthday. And then I, I put out a, um, I, I put out a, a, a post on my, uh, on my Instagram and it wasn't it wasn't meant to be cryptic in the way that it was read and and the way it was received and 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 sort of the way it was uh, people took it. Um, so I just I just wanted to sort of clear the air for everyone and and be and I wanted it coming from my mouth. I I, I wanted people to hear everything from me. And, and then, uh, this is it. I don't, I don't want to have to talk about this anymore. Megan doesn't really want to talk about it anymore. I'm sure Colson doesn't want to talk about it anymore. So this is sort of the, uh, this is kind of everything. Um, Megan gives me a hard time about, uh, oversharing <laughs> and, and, uh, and divulging too much information, but that's just, that's, that's my blessing and curse, I guess, because people people tend to like the fact that I uh, I just openly talk about stuff and that I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm very candid, but at the same time, um, what comes along with that is a lot of me just sort of rambling. So I'm sorry for that, but this is uh, Derek knows I don't I don't plan stuff ahead of time. I sort of just go with it and I'm in the moment. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm sort of thinking out loud and, and feeling out loud and, and expressing out loud. And that's, that is what it is. And th- you know, there are going to be times during this episode where, uh, where things are smooth and they, and they move well. And then there are times where I'm going to be reflecting a little bit and, and, and thinking. And so I apologize ahead of time for, for doing that. But uh, the situation um, sort of lends itself to that, I guess. So I think I think the best thing for me to do is to start at the beginning of all of it. Just to again, I want to I want to paint context. Um, I want people to really understand what's going on. Um, so last year around. Halloween, Thanksgiving time, um, Megan was out of the country shooting, shooting a film. And, and she was gone for about five and a half weeks. It was the, it was the longest that she's been gone working. And so I, I was at home with the kids and everything was fine. And, um, and about three weeks into her being gone and, and shooting, I had, uh, I had a dream, which I, most people dream but I don't, I don't ever remember my dreams. I, I wake up in the morning and it's like, there, there's that part of me that's like, I didn't dream last night. Cause I don't, I don't remember anything. I fell asleep and I woke up this morning and it's all, it's all done. Mm. But I had this dream that she came back from work and that we were, that we were distant, that things were off, that things were weird. And I sent her a text that day and I was like, Hey, I had this dream last night, which shocked her because I don't, I don't ever really dream. Um, and I told her what it was and she 
she texted me back and she said, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry that you had that. That's terrible. Um, and so I felt better. I felt like, okay, well, I just, I just had a dream, uh, you know, that we were distant, but everything's, everything's fine. And then, uh, she got back from being out of the country and working and, uh, and we were distant. It was, it was almost exactly what I had, what I had dreamed, but I, I gave her a couple weeks. I figured, you know, she's been out of the country. She's jet lagged. She's been shooting nights. Like she's, I have to give her some time to recoup a little bit and get back into life. And, uh, and so I did. And about two weeks had passed and things were, things hadn't, hadn't really changed. They hadn't progressed. We didn't, we weren't feeling any closer towards each other. And I wasn't, and so I had, I'd sent her a text, uh, that day saying, Hey, you know, you've, you've, I I've given you a couple of weeks. I understand if you're jet lagged and if that's the case and you're tired and you're recouping, that's, I, I totally understand that. Should I be concerned about our marriage? If, you know, if, uh, if that's not the case and she responded back, Hey, let's, let's talk about it later. So right away I was thinking, well, that's not very, that's not very good. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not a text you ever want to get. Yeah. It's not a good what sign. you want to hear is, yeah, we're good. <laughs> yeah, we're fine. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so she came home cause she had been working that day. She came home later and we sat down in the living room and we talked about it and she said, you know what? I, I realized while I was out of the country working alone that, um, that I, I feel more like myself and I like myself better. Um, I, I liked myself better during that experience. And, and I think that might be something worth trying for me. And, and I, yeah, I was, I was shocked and I was upset about it, but I can't be upset at her. And I wasn't upset at her because that's, it's, she didn't, she didn't ask to feel that way. She didn't, you know, she, it wasn't a choice she made. That's, that's the way she honestly felt. Um, and so we, we talked about it some more and we decided, you know what, let's, let's separate a little bit and give ourselves some time and take some, some space and meditate and do whatever and see, see what it is we find. And, uh, and so we did. And so people started seeing in, in the tabloids that, I was in Malibu a little more. She was in Calabasas at that house. You know, we, we still have the Malibu house. So it was, I gave it time and, and, and came, came here. Um, and, and things just didn't really change from there. And, and the reality started sinking in of maybe, maybe this is, what it is like me, you know, we, the reality is we've, we've been together for 15 years and we've been married for 10 and we have three amazing children. And, um, and there's, there's the sense of, of loss of, you know, how do I, how do I go on with this big part of, my life that, uh, that I've always known and, and loved and, and, and shared, uh, changing, like, how does, how, you know, how does, what does that landscape look like? Like, what does that life look like? Um, and, and Megan and I talked a lot about it and a big concern for both of us, really both of us. I mean, Megan, you know, people, People talk shit about the fact that she's younger than me and all of that, but she's, um, she's really a responsible person and she really loves the kids and cares about what, what their life and their experience is. And, uh, and we talked about that and we talked about the fact that, you know, separation, we can't, we can't pretend that it doesn't that it won't affect the kids because it will. But 
the control we have is how it affects the kids. We talked about the fact that, you know, most people, when they talk about divorce and all of that, and, you know, they have friends that they go to school with, that's the D word is like this is, is this grenade that you throw in a room. And most people, most couples, you know, that are going through divorce, they, they're bitter. They hate each other. They resent certain situations. They talk trash about each other. Like it's this very volatile, uh, situation. And, and there's, there's no reason for it to be with us. Neither one of us did anything to each other. Um, she's always been honest with me. I've always been honest with her. We've had an amazing, an amazing relationship. Um, and, uh, and I will, I will always love her and I know she'll always love me. And I know, I know that like, as far as a family, like what we've built is really, is really cool and it's really special. Um, so we decided let's, let's make sure that we don't, we don't lose that. Let's make sure that no matter what, we're always, we're always friends with each other and we, and we're a united front with the kids and, you know, we'll do, we'll still do family vacations and we'll, we'll do holidays as a family and that kind of stuff and, and really make that a focus for the kids. Um, so, uh, so since since that, since the end of the year, you know, we've, we've really been trying to sort of be apart and figure out what life is now. Cause it's a, it's a big change for both of us. Um, it's not something that you go into a marriage considering, I, you know, I went into a marriage and, and Megan did also thinking, okay, we're, we're getting married. Like this is, this is a, a choice for life. Like this is somebody that I want to share the rest of my life with and have a family with. And, and, um, you know, I think, I think for me, I think for me that might've been a bit of a downfall because I, I think I became too, um, just complacent like this, like, okay, this is, this part of life is done. I've, you know, I, I now have a family and a wife and I love her and she loves me. So I don't have to really work at that. Or I, I, you know, we can sort of take care of the kids and do that stuff and, and be, and we're okay. And I, I think that's, that's a pitfall that, that a lot of people find themselves in, you know, they, they sort of, they, uh, they, they sort of, expect that now that they're married and they have kids like that part of life is done and and they don't have to work anymore at it. And that's not the case. It wasn't the case for us. That's the case for some, I'm sure it wasn't the case for us. Um, so Megan has continued working and doing that. And, you know, she met, uh, she met this, uh, this guy, Colson on, on set, um, on this film she's working on. I, I've never met him goes by machine gun Kelly. I've never met him, but you know, I've Megan and I have talked about him and, and they're, they're friends at this point. And from what she's expressed, he's a really just nice, genuine guy. And, uh, and I trust her judgment. She's always had really good judgment. And, um, and I, I don't, I don't want people to think that her or he are villains or, or I was, uh, I was a victim in any way with any of this because, um, because I wasn't, this isn't, this isn't something new for us. This is something new for people to experience and hear about in the press and take sides on and judge and critique, but it's not new for us. Um, and you know, normally Megan and I stay, stay really quiet about things like this. And we sort of just let, let the story be what, what people want to make of it. 
Um, but during this time period of, of, uh, you know, of people wanting something to write about, this is, it's really, it's really exploded and it's really become something that, that kept me up last night because I don't, I don't want anybody to be vilified in this situation. Um, it, it sucks. It, you know, it's, it sucks when, uh, when life changes and something that you're used to that you've been doing for 15 years, um, you, you try and you, you try and not get rid of, but you, you, you change because there's the unknown aspect to it. And it's, that's really scary. And there's that thing of like, there's that pit in my stomach of like, I really, I really don't want, um, I really don't want Megan and I to, uh, be at odds because at the end of it all, like we've been married and we've, we've done all that, but she's, she's been my, my best friend for 15 years. Yeah. And I don't want to, uh, I don't want to lose that. You don't have to. And I mean, you're, yeah, I don't, you're, you're I don't think I have to. to. I don't think I will, to. but no. there's the fear. There's the fear of that. You know, um, you, I don't want to interrupt you, but I, no, I, think, it's, I think it's a pivotal point for me to, to say something I was thinking and I hate the term child of divorce, but I, you know, I, my parents split when I was seven and I remember you saying something maybe two years ago on this show. I don't know. Early on one of the first few episodes, Steve might've even been still here. If that tells you how old it might have been. Right. And a long time ago. I just, I remember you saying something to the effect we, we were talking about the kids and we were talking about cash and I wish I had the exact quote in my mind right now, but it, I never heard it put that way. And I loved how you put it. And I wish I could think of exactly how you said it right now. Cause I wish I could play it back for you and you could hear it in your own voice from two years ago. But you just, it was, it was to the effect of, you know, when, a, when a relationship ends, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be nasty and it doesn't have to be ugly and it doesn't have to be, you know, for anybody else's consumption. And it can be two people who can look back on the time they had together and, and, you know, that snapshot in time, that Polaroid moment in history for the two of you was, was good. And you can take that away from this you know you can always have that you know what it's not it's not really a polaroid moment in time because for the rest of our lives we have three right. amazing kids right that we that we get to raise and and watch grow and watch become adults and uh and we're we're always going to be in each other's lives exactly. so it's really it's really a choice of like how how do I want someone to be in my life or how do I want to be in their life? And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be, um, there are going to be growing pains to it for sure, because this is, we, this is all uncharted. This is all new, but, uh, but honestly, uh, like I couldn't, I couldn't ask for a better person to be dealing with this with than than Megan. She's uh, she's really intelligent and really caring and really sensitive and really compassionate, and she she listens and she's loving, and um, and I think I think she'll be a, a really good voice of reason within all this. Cause this is there, you know, there are times where this is, it's, it's going to go off the rails a little bit because this is fucking new. And there, there are a lot of, there are 15 years of feelings and, and all of that that are involved. And sometimes they feelings just act up. They, they, they rear their ugly heads. They just do. And, and sometimes they, they don't do it in, in uh, very civil kind ways. Um, and when, when those times happen, I think it's important to have somebody across from those, a voice of reason that goes, okay, all right, you know, vent, 
It's yeah. okay. It's not, it's not actually directed at me. You're just directing it at me right now. Right. So go for it. Um, but I, I want to, I want to continue to have that with her and I want her to have that with me. And I don't, and I really lost sleep last night. Like I don't, I don't want her to be villainized in this at all. Or, or I, I don't want this guy Colson who, who I've never met, who she said nothing but really kind things about. Um, I don't want him to be vilified because nobody did anything wrong. It's not, it's not like we are separating or anything because somebody cheated or somebody hurt somebody. It's, I feel like, you know, people are on paths in life sometimes and you're on the same path and you, you walk that path together and things are working and then paths just kind of separate sometimes. And it's not, it's not a choice that somebody makes. It just, people sort of find new things that interest them and new, new directions that they want to take in life. And the person that they're with may not be on that same path. They may want to take a completely different direction in life. That was what you said. And, that that's I I totally murdered uh, paraphrased. <laughs> yes, that is what you said. That is exactly. Yeah, what you I'm, said I'm it glad. Too. I'm glad that I I repeated myself <laughs> <laughs> for the purpose of uh, of of quoting myself for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't feel um, as much like an idiot now. So Pat, you know, paths just do that. And you sort of, you look down at one point and you go, you know what, I'm on a very different path now. And we are on a, a very, we're on very different paths than we were. That's not, that's, I don't think that is, uh, spiteful in any way. I don't think that's done on purpose to hurt somebody's feelings. Um, I think that just is what it is. And and I think this is what it is. Um, you know, who knows? Who knows if this is if this is the end of of the the journey? I mean, we've we have a lot of life yeah. left. Yeah. So the the paths have sort of gone in in separate ways for now. They could come back together. They they may not. We we don't know. I don't know. I, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to make any predictions with that because I have. I have no idea. Every time I feel like I have life figured out, then life goes. Yeah, I'm not even close. No. And and it kicks me in the ass. Yeah. And and this is this has become one of those times, but not but not in a bad way. I don't. I. I it's really it's really important to me that people don't don't treat anyone like a villain or a victim in this situation. Um, having the context, I think people can look at what I posted yesterday in a different light because it wasn't, it wasn't pointing at anyone or blaming someone or it was, it was just my way at the time of being heard and still being present in a situation, but not completely knowing how to deal with it because it's not, you know, being in, being in the public eye and dealing with stuff is, uh, is tough. Well, it's hard to, I mean, separating is hard enough, let alone separating going, yeah, how are we going to frame this for people? That's, then <laughs> like, that, that was what I was going to say when, when you needed a moment to collect your thoughts again, yeah. I was, it's so hard for people to understand, and I, I don't. I'm never under. I have never understood why it is so hard for people to understand that just because you're up on a big screen in a movie theater, they, that they see you or they see you on their TV screens week to week, doesn't mean you're not real people with actual feelings and emotions and an actual family with children. And you know, you're not figures for gossip. You're actual people that are going through real things that that everybody experiences and that it has to be slapped on a website or a blog or a instagram post is it, it sucks it sucks that you can't i think i think that's the reason though why tabloids exist oh yeah uh, i think undoubtedly i think yeah i think i think for that 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 side of like humanizing celebrities by showing the things that they go through and go and see everybody goes through. Yeah. But then the it's not just you, but the fallout from it then is you don't get to 
you don't get to grieve or be joyful or anything in private. You don't get to deal with those things in a private right. nature when you can't even drive down the road without somebody taking a picture of you. Right. I mean, that. Yeah. It, so it ends up, you know, that there is that element of the celebrities. They're just like us kind of thing. But at the same, but then the, the backhand of that is, is no, because you, yeah, you don't you're not, get to, you're not dealing you, with the life. Exactly. You're not mean. getting to let us experience it like everybody else is. So, you know, and that's that's the the shitty part of it for you for you both right. for for all yeah. for anybody in that situation that yeah that you're both and, and we're not the first and we're not going to be the last no. to to go through this I, I it's um it's just a matter of like we're, you know we're not people know we're not very public people we don't we don't talk a, a lot about stuff we do I talk I talk more about myself and, and life on this podcast than, uh, than I do anywhere else. Yeah. But, you know, in defense of, of tabloids, which I, I, I mean, they, you know, they, they, they deserve defense at this point. Um, they, they do call for comments. I mean, we, you know, when, when Megan and I were seeing different places and not wearing wedding rings, which was fucking insane. Yeah. If, if anybody really pays attention and looks, Megan, I, I think wore her wedding ring twice the whole time we were married. So like within 10 years, she's worn the wedding ring twice. So it's not, there was no sign there of like, Hey, something's going on because she doesn't have it on. It's like, no, it's, you know, that's fucking normal. The sign was like, Oh, I don't have mine on because I, I have just sort of made it a point of my, myself and, you know, and all of that, that that's just something that I wear. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, Megan, Megan and Colson are, they're, they're good friends at this point. She said he's just been an, a, a really good friend, which she needed. And, um, and I, you know, I don't want her to, I don't want her to be looked at in a negative way or him to be looked at in a negative way for doing that. Uh, that's what, that's what good people do. Good people step up and help people that need help. And that's, and that's what he's doing. And, you know, he's, and it sucks that pictures were taken and, and that Paps recognized his car because he's had it for a while. And it's a pretty fucking recognizable car. I mean, when you drive an Aston Martin, <laughs> you're, you have to expect that, you know, paparazzi are going to go, Hey, there's the Aston Martin. Like it's not, you know, it's sort of a rare car. Um, but it's a shame during this time that, uh, that they were photographed and that a story was made of it, but there is, there is no story there. Um, the story is with us and, and hopefully with this, with me doing this, uh, there is no more story. There's, there, there are no more questions to, to ask. Um, everything's sort of laid out and people get a sense of like where our heads are at and what, and what's going on. Um, because I don't, I, I don't want to talk about this again. This is, I, I, I choose to hopefully as Megan does go back to life and, and go back to that situation. And, you know, and we will deal with it the way we have to deal with it as, as things come up. Um, but I don't, I don't want to have to share those anymore. I, I don't think people need to know all of the steps that I'm nor, currently taking nor should you have to right um so uh so there it is Mom, 218 Mom 218 on monday and uh i i'm sure i've bored the crap out of a bunch of people but this is uh this is a really great forum to be able to to do this um because this is this is me speaking this isn't somebody doing an interview and then sort of, you know, massaging it and creating what they want readers to read. This is, uh, this is me. And I hope, I hope people hear this and they, they get a much better sense of, uh, what we're going through and who I am and, and who Megan is and who Colson is. And, uh, and they have a different, a, a different view of this situation. And, and then they respect us and they, and they let us, um, they let us deal with this on our own, which we should anyway. So there soapbox soapbox moved.
I'm back on the ground You're again. Back down. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I was get, I was getting lonely down here. Thank you for coming back to my level. <laughs> I appreciate you lessening yourself to come back down to where I'm at. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs>